Thank you very much. Can I just start by asking, how many of you here in the room actually own your own business already? I believe it's a majority. It was fantastic. Those of you that work for someone else, where are you guys and gals sitting? Excellent. Good to see. Um, you know, the reason I ask that question is because being in business for yourself is one of the biggest challenges there is in life. And when you look at it, uh, it's probably also one of the loneliest roads there are because the reality of it is when you own your own business, who do you go and talk to about your challenges? Who do you go and talk to about what's going on in the business? What's going wrong? What's going right? You know, you don't go and talk to your bank manager. In fact, you probably want to hide from your bank manager what's going wrong with your business. You don't go and talk to your spouse. You don't go and talk to your staff about it. And so here, being here today as business owners, it's great that you're all here to learn with each other and from each other. And, and I'm going to teach you a bunch of things to help that. Business will never get easier. You've got to get better at business. And as you get better at business, business gets easier. The challenge is, if all you try and do is get better at the job of business, like if you're a hairdresser and all you do is go and learn more hairdressing skills, that's phenomenal. But that doesn't mean you know how to run the business of hairdressing. If I look at the businesses I've owned over the years, uh, I've been in magazine publishing. When I bought the magazines, I didn't know anything about publishing, but I know how to run a business. In the restaurant business, uh, I don't, again, didn't know anything about cooking and stuff, but I know how to run a business. And so when you look at it, the dog food business, I've been in dry cleaning, been in clothing businesses, you name it, I've probably been in that business. Uh, the car business, the cleaning business, uh, all sorts of different things. Um, in fact, more than 60 companies that I've bought and built and sold over the years. Now, why do I tell you my story? I don't tell it to you, impress you, but to impress upon you, the lessons we're going to learn today are the things I actually do in my business. These are the things I do every day in running my companies to build my companies. Um, as many of you heard in my introduction, I, I, Action Coach is also one of my companies. Now, Action Coach is probably one of the more proud companies I have because every day around the world, what we do is we get to help business owners like you grow your business. And if, if I can just go back a little ways, um, the reason I started Action Coach is at the time I was in photocopy shops. And anyone ever remember when you had to actually go to a store to get photocopies done? Like, the, and where were the grey-haired no-heads in the room? There you go, see? We remember that stuff where you had to go and do that. Well, that was the business I was in. And most of my customers were small business owners. You know, that's who came into to our store to get copies done. Big businesses had their own copier. And I remember some of my clients that uh, they'd been really good customers and they weren't coming in. And I thought, why aren't they coming in? And I thought I'd call them to find out why aren't my customers coming back? And I thought maybe we did something wrong. Maybe we gave them bad service or something. And here's what I found. The reason they didn't come back is actually they were out of business. The reason they didn't come back is actually they weren't in business anymore. They'd gone broke. And I sat there and I said, why? What, this doesn't make any sense to me. What's going on? And so I started to write newsletters about how to grow your business, how to do, thinking, by the way, that if I taught them how to do more flyers, they'd come in and do more photocopies type thing. And, um, and ultimately, what I found was there was such a lack of information for business owners on how to grow their business, so I started helping them. I started running seminars, and I loved the seminars so much, and people kept asking me for help. And uh, I, I guess what it really got me and made me stick with coaching was one simple thing. I was walking with one of my clients and his wife, and she, she was espousing to me what had happened in their life because of coaching. See, when I met them, he was working 80, 90 hours a week in overdraft, barely paying the bills, worried every single week about paying the staff, paying the staff more than he took home, you know, and, and that was the situation that he was in. And, and I, I hate to say it, but I know some of you are in that situation in the room. And, and look, today, I want, if there's one thing that you can get from today, is that there is a way through that. There is a way out of it. There's a way to build your business so that it works so that you don't have to. And this day I'm walking with him and his, uh, and his wife and his wife turned to me and said, Brad, I don't know if you really understand what you've done. I said, yeah, we built the business. She said, no, 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 it's not about the business. It's about the fact that now my husband can go and see the kids play a soccer game. It's about the fact that my husband now bought me a new car for my birthday and the look of pride on his face when he could afford to do that. It's about the fact that now people respect him and his business and everyone knows who he is. And it's about the fact that my kids can go to a private school and we can pay for the tuition a year in advance. And when someone tells you those things, you understand the why you're doing what you're doing. And this is a lesson for you. Why are you in business for yourself? Why are you in business for yourself? If your only goal is to pay the bills, the best you'll achieve is to pay the bills. 
You know, you won't get any better than that. And so your whole aim of business needs to understand, why am I there? Now, I'm going to give you a framework today as to how I build companies, how we do it, and how you can do it too. See, the greatest thing about business is other people have succeeded before you. Is that true, yes or no? Yeah. Yeah, so if other people have done it, guess what? That means you can do it too. But you've got to learn the steps. See, the whole key to get... Uh, if I can go back to the very basic fundamentals of, of earning more, is you've got to learn more. Learn comes before earn, team. And if you're not learning more, don't expect to earn more. Too many business people think, if I just work harder, I'll get better. If I just put in more hours, it'll get better. And that's not the case. It doesn't work that way. So let's get on to some learning and some understanding about how business actually grows. Because growing a business is something that you have to learn and you have to understand. And for us here today, I want to take you on a journey of what it looks like to grow a business. Now, let's get one thing very clear from up front. If you want the business to grow, do you think that means you as the owner need to grow and change too? Yes or no? Yes. Hello, yes or no, team? Yes. So if you don't grow, guess what? Business is not going to grow. If you don't learn more, if you don't keep growing as a business person, the business, and I'll put it really bluntly, this is the Australian in me, uh, the business will grow to your level of incompetence. Every, are we all in agreement that if we want to succeed more, we need a coach? Yes or no? See, you're not confident on that answer yet, are you? Because you're like, hang on, is he going to ask me to spend money? Am I, I going to actually have to invest money? Yes! Yes, you're going to have to invest money if you want to grow your business. Now, you might start with coaching with simply a book, okay? You might start out that all I need to do is read a book and that's where I need to start my coaching. Fantastic, if that's what you need. Some of you, though, might need to work one-on-one -on -one with one of my team. I have, I have hundreds of coaches. And if it's your job to work with them, then fantastic as well. And you might invest a couple of thousand quid every single month to work with a coach. I'm not sure what level you need to be at, but here's the question for you. Your favourite sporting team, do they have a coach? Yes or no? Yes. Favourite sports player, tennis player, it doesn't matter what sport it is, if they want to succeed, they have a coach. And if you want to succeed in business, what are you going to need to have? Coach. Yeah, you're not as confident already, are you? It's like, <laughs> hang on, do I have to answer that positively? Yes, you do. Someone asked me about 10 years ago, because I've been doing business coaching now for 24 years. When I first started the industry, people said to me, coaching, what's that? Is that like consulting? And that was sort of the only way I could explain to someone. Yeah, it's like consulting, except we meet every single week, and every week I make sure you've done what you need to do, and you make sure you're getting your work done, and I coach you on what needs to be done next. And they're like, oh, right, so it's, it's like consulting. Well, yeah, okay, it's like consulting. Let's just stick with that. Ten years ago, someone asked me, Brad, is it, 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 does every single business owner need a coach? And I said, well, no, they don't need a coach, but what if their competitor got one and they didn't? See, think about your favourite sporting team or your favourite sports person. If their competitor had a coach and they didn't, which one's probably going to win? See, just think about it from that perspective, team. So, ultimately, four main goals. First one, educate. Okay, second one, I'm going to be your coach. Third one, I'm going to make sure you get some ideas and strategies to use tomorrow. And fourth one, help you decide what level of coaching. Is it okay if we work that way together, everybody? Say yeah. yeah. All right, so let's get to the note-taking, let's get to the learning and make sure we've got a whole bunch of things that are uh, on your mind. So, first thing I want to teach you is my definition of a business. My definition of a business, a commercial profitable enterprise that works without you. Now, actually, everyone call it out for me. What's, that? What's my definition? A... So let's break that down just for a second. Commercial enterprise. You've got to have a good product or a good service, something that's needed or wanted out there in the marketplace, yes or no? Yes. You know, how many ever met someone that's tried to sell something they loved but the market didn't? It's like people say, if you do what you love, you'll never work a day in your life. Rubbish. If you sell what the market loves, you'll never work a day in your life. You've got to sell what the market wants, not what you love. If the market doesn't want to buy what you want, then change, adapt, adjust. If they're not willing to pay that price for it, change, adapt, move around. You've got to have a product or service that the market wants or needs. You know, when uh, I, I go back in, in history and you think, okay, there was, remember the gold mining periods around the world? There's plenty of places where they went mining for gold and everything. Who made the most money out of the mining town? The miners or the person who ran the bar? Think about that for a second. You know? The guy selling pans made more money than the guy panning for gold. So when there's a gold rush, you've got to have a product everybody wants rather than trying to be the one going into the gold rush. If you look at the internet, who's made the most money out of the internet? 
Cardboard box companies, freight companies. You think about how much you buy online and what's it got to happen. The tape companies, you know, just the, pla the, the sticky tape to box it up and send it to you. The peanut companies, the packaging companies, the, the internet service providers. These are the ones that make the most money. So look at it from that perspective. Commercial profitable enterprise. To be profitable, do we have to be good at sales and marketing? Yes or no? Yes. Hello, yes or no? Yes. Now, how many of you went to school for sales and marketing? Nobody did. Most of you, you I, I, one of my clients years ago is an engineer. And he said to me, Brad, I should be really good at this. I said, he said, I said, why should you be really good? He said, I got 20 years experience. I said, no, you don't. You got one year's experience. You just did it 20 years in a row. See, he'd never had any experience in sales, never experience in marketing, and he wondered why his business wasn't growing at a rapid rate of knots. And he said, well, maybe I should hire a marketing person. I said, that'd be fantastic. Let's do that. What questions will you ask a marketing person to know if they're any good? And he looked at me like, well, I don't even know that. So do you have to learn enough to be able to ask good questions to employ the right person? Yes or no? You've got to at least know that much. See, the owner of a business needs to be someone that knows a little bit about a lot of different areas. Enough to be able to guide, plan, ask the right questions. And that's oftentimes what the best coach will bring out in you. So to be profitable, sales and marketing, on we're going to discuss that and look at that today. The enterprise, that works. Now for a business to work, here's the thing. How many of you do work long hours in your business? Let me just see a show of hands, those who do the long hours. Why are you doing the long hours? You work hard and you work a lot because your business doesn't work. If the business worked, you wouldn't have to. I'll give you an example. Uh, my restaurant in Las Vegas, you ever make it out? We're at the Wynn Casino, it's called La Cave. Great little restaurant, fun little restaurant. How many days a week do you think I work in the restaurant? None is the exact right answer. How many days a year would you guess I work in the restaurant? None is the exact right answer. Now, it's, it's interesting because I'll tell you the story. I, I have four kids. Anyone else in the room got kids? Who's got kids? Keep your hand up if you've got four or more of them. Four or more kids? Well done, congratulations. Rest of you, complete bloody wimps, all of you. You know? Uh, four, uh, my wife and I, we have twins, three and a half year old twins. So if you think life's tough, try doing that. I'll send them over to your house, see how you go for an hour. You know, the grandparents come over and go, oh, we'll take care of the twins, fantastic. An hour later, they're like, oh my God, I'm dead. You know, yes, that's the thing. Now, the reason I bring up my kids is uh, my 14 year old daughter, Mackenzie. Uh, we, go, we go down to our restaurant one night and uh, we, we walk up the front counter. Now, the young girl on reception, I've never met her. She's new. She doesn't know me. I don't know her. How would she know who owns the business? Does that make sense? There's no way for her to know. She knows her boss. She knows all the people in the business. That's great. So I walk up to the front counter as a reservation for sugar. She takes us to the table. She actually uses the scripts perfectly and follows the system. And I'm very proud that the system is being followed and the training must have worked. And we sit down at the table. My daughter Mackenzie comes over to me and she says, Dad, Dad, I don't think that girl knows that we like own the place. And I'm like, well, hang on, kid. That means Dad's successful. And she looks at me and goes, no, no, Dad, when, when you're successful, people should know about that. And I said, whoa, 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 hang on a second, kid. First and foremost, Dad's successful, you're not, okay? You're just a kid. Dad's got the money, you don't yet, all right? Um, second thing is, kid, the definition of a business is something that makes money whether you are there or not. If you've got to be there, it's a job. If you don't have to be there, then you've built a business that works so you don't have to. Can you, can you see the difference between the two, yes or no? How would it feel to be in a business that ran without you? Would that feel different to you turning up every day to have to have a job? See, what would it take? Would you invest in the knowledge to get you to a point where you had a business that worked without you? Would you invest in that knowledge, yes or no? Yeah, yeah. yeah. why? Because then you say, hang on, I got into business to create freedom for myself and now all of a sudden I've actually created freedom for myself. Now, that's the goal of what we're aiming to do. Now, that'll take time. You know, people often ask me, you know, what do you do? I say, well, I'm an entrepreneur. I, I, I you know, buy a lot of companies and I, I teach people about business and money. Now, the moment I mention I teach about money, what's the average person thinking? Hey, teach me how to make money. Teach me how to get rich and they ruin it by adding one word. Teach me how to get rich. Quick. Yeah, quick or fast or whatever strategy they think of. Now, I can teach you how to get rich quick if your definition of quick is 10 years, okay? 10 years. Oh yeah, look at the, everyone's like, really? Really? 10 whole years? Yes! Is 10 years faster than never, by the way? Yes. Yeah, it's faster than never. Most people's plan for success in business is, well, oh, just keep going to work. 
You know, ultimately, gang, we need to have the plan to get a business that works so you don't have to. Would that be a good thing, a business that worked without you, yes or no? Yes. You know, and ultimately, to get there, to take the steps to make that a reality in your life takes some learning. So let's get on with the learning as to how that actually happens. So there's six different steps that we follow through here at Action Coach that will get you to that point. The bottom step is called mastery, or mastery, depending upon where you're from in the world. Mastery is about creating a very stable business, okay? About creating the basics that work. Getting rid of the chaos in your business so it eliminates that panic. How many of you know you have days or weeks or even every single day where you are chasing your tail? You're like putting out fires. Who has days or weeks like that? See, when you're doing that, putting out fires, it means that this basic level is yet to be, be achieved. Then we take a step up the ladder and we say, okay, now we've got to get into the marketing, the niche segment. I used niche to determine it, or niche, again, depending on where you're from in the world. I use that to describe it because I want you to understand that marketing is about creating a unique business, creating something that's different, creating something where you don't have to compete on price. So we'll get to more of that in just a little moment. Then we have to go to leverage. Leverage is where we put the systems in place in our business. Now, when you go and put, uh, when you go from uh, mastery to niche, you're getting stability. Then when you move up to leverage is where you're starting to get the cash because the niche is where the marketing and sales gets really strong in your company. So the cash flow becomes really strong. You can now afford the systems in your business. And you want to put the systems in place or get leverage. Leverage, by the way, my definition for that is do the work once, get paid forever. What's my definition, everybody? Do the work once, get paid? Forever. See, I'll give you an example of that. Um, okay, this is the first book I ever wrote, Instant Cash Flow, which before you all leave, what should you do? <laughs> buy, buy all of them, cheapskates. Don't just buy one. Buy the whole lot. You know, I'm, I'm a... Will my publisher love me, yes or no? Yes. You're not all that confident now that I mentioned buying stuff, are you? It's like, see, the thing about it is, I'm a salesperson. Where are the other salespeople in the room? Well, okay, hang on, let me re-ask the question. Are we all in sales, yes or no? Yes. Yeah, it's like everything in life in sales. You ever been out on a date? That's selling, okay? Everything is sales in life. It's all you've got. You've got to remember, young man, though, it's your conversion rate that counts. Now... Some people will catch that joke on the way home, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> the reason I bring up sales is this. You see, uh, someone once said to me, oh, Brad, you're a bit of a pushy salesman. I said, yes, yeah, because I believe in what I sell. And he said, I don't want to be a pushy salesperson. I was like, oh, really? What's wrong with your product? Now, think about that for a sec. The, re the only reason you wouldn't want someone to buy what you sell is because you don't believe in it properly or you've got bad service or you, or you believe your competitors are better than you. Are you better than your competitors, yes or no? Yes. Do you give good service and a good product, yes or no? Yes. Great, so you should be a pushy salesperson because if you don't get them to buy from you, they have to buy from your competitor. Yeah, it's an interesting aspect behind business where people, they, they start a business, yeah, oh, I don't want to come across as pushy. You need to come across as pushy sometimes. You need to help people make a buying decision sometimes. Other times it's real easy, they've already made the decision. Now, the reason I use this book as an example of leverage is a very simple one, okay? How many times did I write the book? Not a trick question, how many times? How long will I sell the book? Forever and ever. You know, I wrote this book now uh, 19 years ago. And still, 75 years after I die, my kids will still make money off of this book. See, the aim of business is you build a business that works so that it pays you back for ever and ever and ever. Now, leverage is about creating systems that actually run the business, systems that keep the business running. Now, ultimately, that's where we want to get to. Then we have to get to a thing called team, building a team, okay? Building the people in your organization. Because if you want a business to run without you, do you have to have a good team, yes or no? Yes. Hello, yes or no? Yes. Now, here's the thing. Then we kick into synergy, which is where the business starts to multiply. Instead of percentage growth, we talk about times growth at that point. See, most businesses would be happy with 30% growth. 30% each year would be a good growth. Once we get to the synergy level, now what we're aiming to do is achieve 30 times growth or 10 times growth of the business to multiply it, to open it up across the world in multiple locations, to leverage it, to franchise it, to license it, to many different ways of looking at that. But again, is this some learning that has to be done, yes or no? Yes. 
Okay? And this is where we as business people, if we become better business people, it gets better. And then ultimately the results. And that's where you can either retire, the business runs without you, makes plenty of money, or you can sell the business, or you can do whatever it is you want at that point, because it works so you don't have to. So this is the structure. Now, here's the interesting point behind this structure. Uh, over now 24 years of coaching businesses, literally tens of thousands of businesses every single week somewhere in the world are coached by an action coach. This structure is used with every single one of them, no matter where we are. We operate in Turkey, we operate in Israel, we operate in China, in India, down in Australia, over across the US, up in Canada, down in Mexico, Chile. The system is the same. So my challenge to you is to now learn the system by which businesses grow. The moment you understand the system, hey presto, everything works for you. So let's go into some detail around some of these. Let's start with the first one. The basics of mastery. We have to get a commercial enterprise. What do we have to get? Okay, so with that commercial enterprise, there's four areas that we're going to focus in on for your business here tonight. First area we're going to focus in on is destination mastery. Everyone call it out for me so I know you remember it. What is it? So when we look at destination, what I mean by that is what are the goals? What's the vision of your company? Where are you headed with your business? If in your business the goals aren't 100% clear for you, then what are they like for your staff? Yeah, and this is the thing. If all of your staff can't tell me the goal every single day, every single week of your business, then they're all going in different directions. So if you were to rate your business right now on clear goals, clear direction, what's the plan, where are we going, what rating would you give your business right now? And it doesn't matter if it's a one or a two, what matters is that you know where you're at so you know where you've got to go. Okay? Knowing where you're at is a big part of business success. Admitting to where you're at is a big part of business success. And sometimes it's not about what you've got to do that's got to make you successful, it's about what you've got to stop doing that'll make you successful. Second part of this mastery is called money mastery. What is it, everybody? Money. Now, here's a very simple thing. Average business, when they come to us for help at Action Coach, do you think they're very clear on their finances, yes or no? No, they're not very clear on their finances. They're not up to date on it. They don't know their cash gap. They don't know their cash position. They don't know what they need to make every single day to hit profit goals and do that sort of stuff. Now, that's not a bad thing. Why? Because most business people were taught the business of their business. Like, if you're an IT professional, you, you're not worried about the accounting every day. You're worried about making sure your customers get the IT work that they do. If you're a locksmith, you're doing locksmith work all day. You're not doing the finances. But do we need to get the finances taken care of in order to grow the business, yes or no? Yeah, yeah. yeah. and this understanding of finance. So I'll, I'll give you a simple example of this. Working with a client many years ago, owned a bakery. Now in his particular bakery, he would, he would make money, but he didn't make a lot of money. Why? Simple thing. He didn't understand the difference between markup and margins. See, markup is up and margins is down. So you would go in and take a look at his prices and let's imagine he was selling something for $5 that cost him a dollar to make and then he had a 50% off sale. So he's only making $1.50 on these things but he thinks he's making 50%. I mean, it's crazy the way people react to their numbers team. And understanding your numbers is a very big part of business success. Is this something that we have to do with most business owners to get their numbers straight and get clear on it? Yes or no? Because here's the big important part. What if we go and do marketing and we start selling a whole bunch more and then we realise that you're actually losing money on that item? The more you sell, the, you, the faster you go bankrupt. And this happens in too many businesses where they don't understand. And cash flow is one of the biggest challenges I come across in this one. Most businesses where they're making sales but they're not collecting, that one there alone, usually when we come in and coach a business, we can recoup our fee just by helping them put a collection system in place to collect the money they're already owed. And if you don't have a collection system, again, something you've got to learn how to build and how to put in place in your business. So then we go to time mastery. What's the third one, everybody? Now, when we ultimately uh, take a look at time mastery, how many of you know that a bunch of your week disappears into nothingness and it's just wasted? Who knows that one? Say yeah. yeah. Okay, where does it go? Who knows? But understanding how to get product productivity out of yourself and your team. Very simple one that you can start doing tomorrow. How many of you would like to have 30% more productivity out of yourself and your staff starting tomorrow morning? Say yeah. yeah. Okay, great. Every day, you're not writing this down. Write this down. Okay? Every day at the end of this day, every single employee in your company must, and I mean must, write down what they've got to do tomorrow, what they have to do, what they have to achieve the next day. 
If every person in your company does that before they leave, then hey presto, guess what? All of a sudden they're all 30% more productive. How do we know that? Well, last time you went on holiday, what did you do? You made a list of everything you had to achieve the day before you went on holiday and you achieved twice as much as you do in a regular day. So start thinking about basic things of time management, time productivity and people productivity. You know, when it comes to human beings in your organisation, there's two things you have to learn, management and leadership. Management is about competent, productive people. What's it about? Two things, competent and productive people. See, if they're not competent at their job, that's a lack of management. If they're not productive, it's a lack of management or bad management going on in the organisation. Do we have to learn management skills in business, yes or no? Yeah. yeah. Now, here's what interesting thing about management. Somewhere in the 80s or 90s, management became a bad word. It was like, you don't want to be a manager, you want to be a leader. A leader is who you need to be. And it's like, hang on a sec. If we don't manage the day-to-day, -day, then it doesn't matter how good leadership is, we're not going to get much done because we don't have productive, competent people. Leadership, on the other hand, is about focused and passionate people. What's it about? What two things? Focused, passionate people. So our goal is now, imagine you had great management and no leadership. Yeah, they're competent and productive, but they're not focused and they're not passionate. They don't enjoy their work, but, you know, they work hard. What if it was the other way around? You had no management, but you had leadership. Yep, they're passionate, they're focused, but they're no good at their job and they don't do it very well. You know, so you've got to manage both of these aspects of, of doing it to get great time mastery. Finally, then we have delivery mastery. What's number four, everyone? Delivery. Making sure your product or service is delivered consistently on, a, on time, on budget, making a profit, so that your customers get a good experience. The fastest way to understand delivery mastery is look at where you're getting customer complaints and there you don't have mastery. Making sure your team deliver and get a wow experience from the customer. That's what we're aiming to do. So these four basic areas are the building blocks of all of our programs here at Action Coach. We start with those four and we build upon them. So that then leads us to the next level, niche or niche, depending on what you want to call it. This is where we add what word to that equation, a commercial what? Profitable enterprise, commercial profitable enterprise. See, the niche is about the marketing. The niche is about making sure that your business does not have to compete on price. If you compete on price, you're going to die. Any business that tries to compete on price, if you live by price, you will die by price. Here's the thing. If you go out there and your marketing is all about getting uh, you know, a cheap deal, this deal, there's the price, it's discounted, it's that. What type of customer do you attract with discount prices? Discount customers. Is there loyalty? See, in business, the goal is long-term loyal customers because profit comes from repeat business. Where does profit come from? In fact, write that down. Repeat business equals profit. If you're not getting repeat business, you're not getting profit. It just doesn't work that way in business. And so when you go out there and compete on price, you're getting cheap customers who they'll leave you the moment they what? Can get it cheaper somewhere else. So you've got to start thinking about it. How do we compete on something other than price? By value, by doing these sorts of things. What is our way of making sure we're different? See, if you want to have a, the simplest example of that I can give you. Um, Ralph Lauren, yeah, a couple of guys here. Ralph Lauren polo shirts. Who owns a Ralph Lauren polo shirt? This guy over here, bright green one, okay? Yeah, he's got a bright green polo shirt. Now, if he'd gone to any other store and bought that polo shirt, non-Ralph Lauren, what price would he have paid for the polo shirt without the like, Ralph Lauren big horse on it? How much? Ten, Ten yes or no? Yeah. Now, he paid it for Ralph Lauren. Sorry to pick on you there, buddy. Um, but he went and bought a Ralph Lauren one, so what did he pay for it? 50, 100. Does, does that make sense? See, Ralph Lauren sells the same product but does not compete on... Price competes on value, the brand, all of these things. Now, most small businesses don't have the money to get to a brand like that. So we've got to look at other methodologies of creating your uniqueness out there in the marketplace. I'll give you two simple examples. One of them, my dentist, uh, back in Brisbane, Australia, where I was born and grew up. My dentist's name is Paddy Lund. You go into Paddy's dental practice. It's not your average dental practice. In fact, you're not allowed to become a customer unless you're referred to him as a dentist customer by one of his existing customers. And when you become a customer, you sign a customer agreement that says you'll pay all of your bills ahead of time. It says you'll provide him with two referrals every year of customers as good a quality as yourself or better. And you think, wow, how, how does he get away with that? How does he do that stuff? Well, I'll give it to you simply. When you walk to the door of Patty's, it's not a, you, there's no, the door's not open. You have to ring the doorbell to go in. Mike Kenners, her name is Pat. 
Pat would come and greet me and give me a great big hug and say, Brad, welcome in. And you'd walk in and you walk past this beautiful big cappuccino machine. So when you go into the dentist, you don't smell that horrid dentist smell. What do you smell? Coffee. They've got an oven right next to it baking sugarless muffins to give you when you leave. You know, and so you've got this muffin smell, this coffee. And then you go into your waiting room. Now, how do I know it's my waiting room? Well, on the door, it says, this room is especially reserved for Brad Sugars. It's got a star on it and my photo in the middle of the star. (laughs) What does your dentist have? (laughs) You know? Yeah, you all want to change dentists. So I sit in my waiting room. It has my TV with my remote control. Pat comes in to serve me a cup of tea. She doesn't just bring me it in a styrene cup with a, a, a wooden stirrer. She comes and lays out the silver platter. She's down on her knees serving me strainer like I'm the queen. And it's like, wow, this is fantastic. Now here's the thing. If they take that much care with the tea, how much care do they take with your teeth? Uh, And you start understanding that you can create a uniqueness in so many different ways. My accountant on the Gold Coast of Australia, one time I sat there with him and jokingly said, you know what, I hate coming in to meet with you. This is the most boring part of my entire month, meeting with my accountant. He said, well, what would make it fun? I said, if we could play golf while I met you. He took it literally. He went and installed one of those golf machines, you know, the ones where you hit it to the, into the thing and it shows you on the screen where your ball went. So now I go to my accountant and I'm hitting golf balls. Now here's the fun part for him. Every time I hit the ball, I say, hang on. That's another seven seconds he just billed me. <laughs> how are you unique? How are you different in your marketplace? You might not even see how you're unique. Usually it takes an outsider to be able to see what's unique about your business because it's hard when you're in your business to see what's unique about your business, but outsiders can often look at that. But once you create a uniqueness, gang, all of a sudden. It's like here at Action Coach, one of the things we do that makes us unique is we're the only business coaching company in the world to offer a guarantee. How simple is it that, and see, here's the thing. If you were going to work with a business coach and they didn't make you more money than you paid to work with them, that wouldn't make sense. You know, it makes sense to say, see, here we are at Action Coach. We give you our 7.17 week guarantee. It's in writing. It's on the website. It's very simple. If we don't make you more money in 17 weeks when you start working with us, then we'll work with you for free. So either way, we're free. Either we're making you more money than you invest to work with us, or we work with you for free. Is that a pretty good deal, yes or no? Actually, let me just think of it this way. See, is a guarantee a fair way to do business? doesn't matter what business you're in. Is it a fair way to do business, yes or no? And if you're a good business person, you would do it fair anyway, so why not promote the fact that you're fair about it? Why not let the world know that you're a good business person and do it that way? Is that that clear for everyone? So become unique. You don't have to compete on price. Now, I'm going to get to marketing in a minute. We'll go more into the price stuff. Here's how we get marketing to really work. There's two things we have to learn, and I'll get you to call these two words out for me. Number one is what, everybody? Everybody. What's number one? And the second one is? Test and measure. What do these two words mean? Well, let me give it to you very, very simply. In fact, let's start with measure. Let's start with the second one. Here's a question for you. Um, How many business, how many people or customers or potential customers called your business today? This week, last week, how many of them emailed your business? See, the challenge in business is most people don't measure the results, therefore they don't know what's really going on. And we go back to the old management axiom of you cannot manage what you do not measure. So as a business person, if you don't know how many people called your business today, how can you get better at it? Let's go back to coaching just for a second. Any sport you wanna, me- you wanna mention, do they measure all of the stats in every single sport, yes or no? Why do they measure the stats? So they can get better. If you're not measuring, you're not going to get better. So I'll give you a simple example. Uh, If you run an ad, uh, an advertisement, let's say you run an ad and uh, it costs you a thousand and you had 20 phone calls and you didn't measure it, you wouldn't know if they worked or not. So what's the simplest question we need to ask every single customer that calls us, comes into our store, emails us, whatever it is. What's the simplest question? By the way, how did you find out about us? By the way, how did you find out about us? And all of a sudden, you start to know, where are my customers coming from? Is it all repeat business? Is it all new customers? Are they coming from referral? Are they coming by walk-in? Are they seeing my advertising? Have they found me on the web? The moment you know that information, it's now powerful and you can use it. Is this making sense to everybody? 
Okay? So what area in your business do you need to measure? We'll get to that in just a moment. Now testing. Why do we test? Well, I'll give it to you very bluntly. Most marketing fails. What did I say? Most marketing what? Now how many of you know that because you've experienced marketing that didn't work? Raise your hands. Now here's the problem. You weren't testing, therefore you spent a lot of money on it rather than a small amount up front. Now, in today's world, testing is so very simple. Google Ads. I mean, Google Advertising has made testing so, so simple. If I want to know if a headline works, in fact, I'll give you an example. Uh, we run an advertisement in a magazine called Success Magazine, and we do it every single month. And it's about $15,000, I think. It's a US magazine for our ad every single month. Now, you'd want that to work, yes or no? Yes. Now, ad, by work, what do I mean? An ad that works is one that makes you more money than you invest to, to pay for the ad. That's what I go into my whole book, Buying Customers, is all about. See, think about this. If you spent 1000 on an ad and it got you 10 new customers, you had to buy those customers. How much did it cost you to buy each one? Okay, so you're buying customers. That's why most new businesses fail. They invest all their money building the shop or building the office, and you say to them, where's your marketing budget? Show me what you got in marketing. And they look at you like, we didn't put any money aside for marketing. Like, oh, well, that makes sense. See, their business is going to struggle because they're not buying any customers. In your business, are you buying new customers or are you just hoping they'll show up? You know, there's a big difference between the two. So let's go back to this idea of testing. This ad was running and it was the, the results because we measured, we knew the results were going down slightly. So we're like, hang on, we need to boost the results of that ad. Let's test some new headlines. So of course we went out and we tested them. Now, does it make sense to test them in the magazine that costs you $15,000 to test a headline? No. Went to Google and said, hey Google, if people search these few terms, please show them this advertisement headline. Now we wrote 12 different ones. Now there was the whole marketing team. I happened to be in the office that day, so I said, oh, I'll throw a headline in or two. Now here's the thing. I own the business. I've written all the books. I'm the guru. If it was up to the, if it was any other business, whose headline would have been on the top of that ad? Mine. Okay, mine would have been on the top of that ad. Here's the thing. We tested it. After testing it, it literally took less than 24 hours to find out the results. And again, some of you are sitting there going, I don't know how to test on Google. Yes, you're going to have to get a coach to teach you that stuff or learn that stuff from somewhere, okay? It doesn't just magically happen. Boom, 24 hours later, we get the results. The advertisement headline that we used to use was still performing okay. However, four of the new ones outperformed it. One of them beat it by 15 times better. Is that a good thing, yes or no? Like 15 times, 1,500% more response? That's phenomenal. Now, here's a question for you. Was my headline the one that beat it by 15 times? <laughs> you all seem pretty confident that I suck at doing this thing. I mean, what's... You are correct. It was not my headline. The interesting thing was, it was there was a young guy who was an intern working for us for the summer. He wrote that headline. His headline, he got a new, he, by the way, yes, he got a job straight away. That's what happens. Yeah, but his headline outperformed the old one by 15 times. Put it into the magazine and boom, your results were way back up there. So start thinking about marketing. Do you need to be more scientific? Do you need to be? Yes, you do. And here's why. What I'm about to teach you, if you've taken awful notes so far tonight or no notes, this next part that I'm going to teach you, you have to take a lot of notes on. Now, why do we have to take a lot of notes? Because this formula I'm about to teach you is the most important thing a business owner needs to know. The most important. So, some of you, take better notes. Here we go. Uh, work through this formula with me. Everyone call it out as you write it down. Number one up the top is what, everyone? Number, Number of leads. Leads are like prospects, potential customers, people you could be doing business with, okay? Then you multiply that by what, everybody? Conversion. Come on, everybody, what is it? So the conversion rate, so we look at it and we say, okay, there's, if 10 people called today and you sold two of them, you've got a conversion rate of 2 in 10 or 20%. So it's the percentage of prospects or leads that become actual customers. So then we take a look at it, that the number of customers then has to be multiplied by number of what? Transactions. That's the repeat business rate. How many times a year does someone actually buy from you? And as you know, some will buy once and never ever be seen again. Others will buy from you 10, 12 times a year. Your goal though is to work out what is the average repeat business rate. 
Then we take a look at the average sale, okay? How much does the average person spend when they come in? Again, some will spend five, some will spend 500, but the average is what the average is. So we multiply number of customers by number of transactions by average sale, and that gives us our total revenue, our turnover, total sales for the business, okay? Then we've got to multiply that by what? What's the fifth one up there in blue, gang? What is it? Profit, profit margin. So you multiply by your margins to give you your take-home profitability. Now, I have three of them up there in bright red. What are the three in red, gang? Call them out for me. Number one? Customer. And? Revenue. And? Profit. Why are those three in red? Why did I highlight those three? How come? Because they're important. Because they're important, yes. They, well, actually, if I was going to use the word important, I'd actually say those three are the least important three numbers up there. Why are they the least? And I know this is going to blow your mind because everyone comes to me and says, Brad, I need more customers, I need more sales, or I need more profits. Why are they the three least important up there? What is the mathematical sign in front of all three? They're the results, aren't they? So they're the result of the other, fi of the other five items. So what are the five most important up there? Leads. Conversion, number of transactions, average sale, and margins. Those five areas are the five areas we're going to need to learn to work on. Now, why is it that I can grow a business super fast? Why is it that the action coaches can grow a business super fast? Real simple. Number of leads, if we take a look at that one, we have over 78 strategies for business owners to go and actually learn how to grow their business. I teach all my coaches all 78 strategies. They come into your business. Is it easy for them to help you create leads, yes or no? See, average business, how many, how many strategies for new leads or new prospective customers is the average business using here today? One or two. One or two. If I was to go around the room and just ask you, you'd be one or two. The best of you would be three or four. But a growth business needs seven to ten. Are you going to have to learn some more marketing, yes or no? And then conversion rate, this is sales. Again, there's 83 different strategies from a marketing perspective that can improve sales, and there's a whole training aspect of sales that can improve sales. If we were to train your staff in sales, would there be a better chance of them making more for you, yes or no? Yes. And th these aren't complex things, gang. This is quite simple, but it just has to be learned at some point in time to grow a business. So then we take a look at number of transactions. There we've got more than 60. Uh, average sale, more than 50 there. Uh, more than 50 again in profit margins. Almost 300 strategies in my toolkit when I walk into your business that I can use to help you grow in any one of those five areas. Now, let's take a look at what happens when I put some numbers into this just so you can start to understand it. So let's pretend last year and write these numbers down so you can see the power of it. Are you going to have to learn these numbers for your business, yes or no? Yes. Hello, yes or no? Yes, you're going to have to measure and learn these numbers for your business. Again, if you struggle with that, see your coach. They'll help you through it. They've got systems and methodologies that make it simple for you to gather this information. So leads, let's pretend 4,000 in this little business. Let's pretend their conversion rate was 25%. So one in four became a customer, okay? So you've got 1,000 customers in this little business. Is, this, is everyone following me with this so far? Okay. Then we've got to look at repeat business. In this example, let's pretend average customer bought twice a year. Again, yes, some of them came in once, never to be seen again. Others bought 5, 10, 20 times a year. Then we're going to use average sale. For this, I'll make the math simple. We'll make it 100. Again, some spent a lot more, some spent a lot less, but the average was the 100. So what's the revenue of this little business? Who's doing the math in their head? What's the revenue of this little business? 1,000 customers, two transactions. So 2,000 transactions at 100. What's the result? 200 grand, correct. So then margins, I'll make the math simple again. I got 25% in this one. So hey presto, we got a take home profit of how much, everybody? 50,000. 50, Can everyone, everyone see how this works? Yeah. Right, now here's where you're gonna get a different feeling from this example. I'm gonna work on each of the five areas. How many areas? Five, five areas, okay. Now do we work on all five at the same time? Yes! You don't go to the gym and do your right arm this month and your left arm next month. You know, it's not that way. We want to work on all five areas, improving them all at the same time. Now, to improve them, do we need to know what they are, yes or no? Yeah. So we've got to learn measuring, okay? Now, to improve them, we're also going to have to learn testing. So we're going to get better at testing every single one of these. So when you work with a coach, do you think you're going to learn some things to improve your leads, yes or no? If you read the books, if you go to the workshops and do all of this stuff, you're going to learn different aspects of how to fix these things. So let's just look at leads. I'm going to fix your leads. How many of you would like to have 10% more leads starting from all your marketing, starting tomorrow? Who'd like that? Say yeah. yeah. 
Great, here's how you're going to fix it. I want you to look at any sales letter you have, any email, any ad, any web page that you have. If I look at your website and I see the words, this is the killer for marketing. You're killing your marketing when you use words like I, we, us, our company, or your company name. What word must you replace that with in every single instance, or at least nine times out of ten? The word is simple. It is you. See, instead of we have 20 years experience, you will benefit from our 20 years in the industry helping customers achieve great results. Do you see the difference when you flip it from we are this to you get that? Customers don't read we and go, oh, wow, that's amazing. If they see a letter that says we this and we that and we this and we that, all they think is we, 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 like the three little piggies. You're just greedy. Stop marketing in a negative fashion about yourself. Start marketing in what's in it for the customer and you will get results. Will that change your results in the coming year? Yes or no? Yes. Hello, yes or no? Yes. Just think of the headline on your web page. What is the headline? How many of you don't even remember what the headline is on your web page? Because you haven't tested it, you haven't measured it, you don't even know if it works. Boom, there's one you've got to learn too. See, is there a bunch to learn? Yes, there's a bunch to learn to be successful in business. But the greatest thing is you learn it on one business, then you can apply it to all of them. You can buy as many companies as you want over time. Um, oh, sorry, back to there. Uh, and then, uh, so if we work on the number of leads and we go from 4,000, we go to 4,400 because all I want to do here, gang, and this is important, I don't want you to think you have to grow massively fast. All you have to do is get a little bit better by a little bit better by a little bit better. See, you don't double a business with one idea that gets 100% better. You double a business by getting 100 ideas that add 1%. Is that, is that clear for everybody? 1%, 1 1%, 1%, 1%, they add up, they multiply. So in this case, we're going to grow your business. I'm not trying to double or triple or do anything fancy with it. All we're aiming to do is achieve 10% better than you did last year. Is, is everyone in the room able to do 10% better? Yes or no? Yes. Hello, yes or no? Yes. Okay. Uh, see, the thing about it is, if I can be really blunt, when we come to work with you in coaching, one of the things we have to look at is your cash gap. That's the difference between when you have to pay for something and when you get paid for it. If you've got a long cash gap, we can't grow fast. We've got to work out how to shorten the cash gap to be able to grow faster. These are some things that you need people from the outside to look at to be able to give you an idea as to how fast you should or could be growing in your business. Many businesses, they grow too slow and other businesses grow too fast and both of those are problems for the business. So then we're going to take a look at your tr conversion rate. Now, getting more new business, you might just have to learn referrals to get better leads. You might just have to learn how to change your ads. You might just have to learn how to, you know, there's so many things you can learn for that. But then conversion rate. How many of you would like to have 10% better conversion rate starting tomorrow? Who'd like that one? Say yeah. yeah. Great. See, now when you work with your coach, they're going to give you dozens of strategies to improve your conversion rate. But I'm going to give you the simplest one of all. Measure it. Measure your... How many of you in the room do measure your conversion rate? You actually know what it is? See, almost no one measures that. And the problem is by not measuring it, you don't know what it is, so you think it's great. I'll give you an example. One of my clients owned a, uh, a car tire business. You know, the, when you need new tires for your car? Uh, people would call their business, and what do you think the first question people would ask would be? Hey, what's the price? How much are the, the... And of course, what would the staff answer it with? Oh, that would be 200 quid. And what's the customer then say? Thanks, I'll call you back. Just by measuring it, he thought he was converting over 60%, 70% of people. That was in his head, oh, Brad, we're pretty good at sales. We get six or seven out of every 10 that call. We measured it for two weeks. Guess what we found out? It wasn't six or 7%. It was actually one seven, 17%. Did that scare the heck out of him, yes or no? Yeah, you know why? He was spending about 40 grand every single month on advertising. 40,000 a month on advertising and he was converting. See, he was throwing out the window over 30,000 a month just by not answering the phones properly. So what's going on in your business? How many of you would like to know the magic line that I taught them, that I teach everybody, that improved their conversion rate? And in his case, we scripted it. It took about six weeks to work the scripts in. But in his case, coaching him through that process, we got it to 49% conversion rate. Now, who's quick at math? 17 to 49. What do we do to the size of his business, basically? Tripled the business. Think about that for a second. Is it worth learning this line, yes or no? Hello, yes or You guys don't seem passionate about this. Do you want to learn this, yes or no? Yes. Okay, write it down word for word. 
Get your pens out. Come on. Word for word. Do not mess up my script. It works so you don't have to, right? Write it down. Ready? Thanks for your call. Don't panic. There's more. (laughs) Thanks for your call. Just so I can help you best. Just so I can help you best. Would it be okay if I asked you a couple of questions? Would it be okay if I asked you a couple of questions? So people call now and you say, thanks for your call, just so I can help you best. Would it be okay if I asked you a couple of questions? What must you then write down and work out and script? A couple of questions. And should the questions lead them towards value or should they focus on price? Value every time. So think about it. Work with your coach. Develop scripts for your business so that your sales is much easier for your team. If we just did the measuring, we could get 10%. But if we scripted it and we worked on your sales, is there a pretty good chance you would get 10% better conversion rate in the next 12 months? Yes or no? Hello? Yes or no? Great. So in this case, we don't go to 35, by the way. We only go to 27.5. 10% better, not 10% more, okay? So I've already done the math for you. That gives you 1,210 customers. Then we're going to work on your repeat business. Raise your hand if you keep a database of all your past customers, like you know them by name and address and so on. Okay, only about 20% of the room do that. Wow! You guys are going to win an award tonight. It's called the, Your award will be the group with the most room for improvement. Yet yeah, this is me being your coach. Remember that not nice part about coaching? That's right now. Those of you who are not keeping the names, addresses, emails, or phone numbers, or whatever can, uh, details of your past customers, you're spending all that money to get them, and then you don't even know who they are to ask them back. Who's your best new customer? One you've already got. Your best next prospect is one that's already on your database, already there. Now, those of you who do have a database again, let me just see a show of hands. Where were they? About 20% of you? Okay. Keep your hand up if you're writing to them every 90 days to ask them back. Keep your hand up if you do that. So we're down even less people all of a sudden. If you're not writing to your past customers every 90 days, asking them back, you're missing out on a massive opportunity to ask them back. What's the simplest way to get repeat business from a customer? A thank you card. How many of you in the room send a thank you card to your customers? They buy from you. You write them a note that says, hey, thanks for buying from us. We really appreciate your business. We'd love to see you back again soon. Anyone do that one? (sighs) Room for improvement. Congratulations. Well done on this award. You guys are amazing. By the way, when... When I sat with my client, he thought he was at 60 or 70%, and it was actually 17% conversion rate. Do you think he was upset over that, yes or no? Yeah, Yeah, he was annoyed. He was well more than annoyed. What was I? (laughs) Excited. Massively excited. Because if he was at 70%, you couldn't improve it that much. But from 17, we had a lot of room for growth, and we could do amazing things. So sit with your coach, work that out, and find out how to do it. So then we go from number of transactions, repeat business, just asking them back. We don't have to get massive. We just have to get 10% better. So two becomes what, everyone? 2.2. Actually, I was in Ireland recently and I had a guy argue with me. He says, Brad, I can't possibly get more repeat business. And I said, why is that? And he said, I run a funeral business. (laughs) Yeah, he thought he was funny. He thought he got me. But hang on, I'm the coach. Oh, really? Who's the customer, the dead person or the family? He looks at me and goes, well, the family. I said, good. Any of them ever going to pass away? He said, yes. I said, good, keep in touch. (laughs) It's an interesting one. I had a real estate person argue with me about this one time. They said, well, you know, Brad, people don't buy a house every week. You know, every three to seven years they buy a house. In our area, it's every five years is the average. I said, fantastic. I'm asking you to write to them four times a year. Now, you've got to put a letter together, a newsletter, a letter. You post it to them. What's it going to cost you all up? Maybe a quid, right? Four times a year. Four quid. Five years, she was talking about. Five years. 20 quid to keep in touch with them so that when they go to list their house again or buy a new house again, they go back to you. It makes sense, yes? Yes. But people just don't do it. So then we've got to look at the average sale. What do you think is the fastest way to improve the average sale? We already talked about it. We've already looked at it many times. The fastest way to increase your average sale is to what? Starts with M. You guys are getting this. Come on, starts with what? M, it means 
measure. If you measure your average sale, will it get better than it is yet today? Yes or no? Why will it get better? Because you're focused on it. Because you're measuring it. It will get better. What's another very fast way? In fact, how many of you would like to have 10% better average sale starting tomorrow, first thing tomorrow, 10% better average sale across the board in your entire company? Who would like that one? Say yeah. yeah. Great. Write this down again, word for word. You ready? Word for word. Don't mess it up. Raise all prices by 10%. Am I, am I serious about that, yes or no? Yes. Hello, yes or no? Yes. Anyone done it recently? Raise their prices across the board by 10%. Anyone do that recently? Who's done that? What, what happened when you did it? More so, See, here's the thing. Who's the most scared person in any business to raise the prices? The owner is. They're all like, oh, if I raise prices, some people won't come. People already complain. Yeah, 5% of people already complain about prices. And no matter what your prices were, guess what they would do? Complain about your prices. See, you've got to understand that if you know sales and you know marketing, it's easy to raise your prices across the board. But again, you've got to learn these things, team. It's not something that just jumps out. So in this case, 100 becomes what? Everyone? 110. So of course we've increased revenues by 10%, haven't we? Haven't we? No, tricked you. Some of you picked it up, didn't you? It's not. It's actually 292,820 which is a 46% increase in revenues. 46% increase in sales. How many of you'd love a 46% increase in sales? Say yeah. yeah. Well, you all said you could do it. You've all agreed that 10% in each area can be done in the next 12 months as long as you do the reading, do the work, learn from the coach, go to seminars, go to workshops, plan the business, it will happen. And of course, then all my accountants in the room from earlier, if we've had a 46% increase in revenues, do we pretty much have a good increase in, in percentage profit? Yes or no? Yeah, but even if we had to use some of the 50-odd strategies to get our margins up, all of a sudden now we're at 27.5, then we've got 80,525 and 50 cents to take home. That's a 61% increase in the bottom line. How many of you would love a 61% increase in the bottom line? Say yeah. yeah. How many of you would that be a fantastic feeling? Yes or no? Yeah. How many of you would that mean you actually have a bottom line right now? It's, yeah, you can't laugh too hard at that one. I mean, the simple thing is, gang, that niche is a very important part. We've got to get the marketing right. If we get the marketing right, everything else gets paid for real simple. Then we move on to leverage. Leverage is where we start to add the system. So a commercial profitable enterprise, that works. Once you build systems in place, and what does system stand for? I'll give it to you very simply. System stands for saving yourself time, energy, and money. If you do the system, I fell in love with systems many years ago, and I sat down and I worked out every time I wrote a system. Now, the simplest system is a checklist. Someone said to me the other week after I was chatting with them about their business, they said a simple statement to me, which was, well, Brad, my staff don't always do a good job. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's not so good. There's inconsistency. And I said to him, well, show me the checklist they have to follow. Guess what he didn't have? A checklist. If they don't have a checklist, of course there's no way they can be consistent. Your pilot, you get on a plane, does your pilot have a checklist, yes or no? Yes. In fact, does your pilot have multiple checklists? Pre-flight checklists, pre-flight this, this. They got all these checklists, why? Because they want to live. If you want your people to succeed 100% of the time, do they need systems, plans, checklists, all that stuff, yes or no? Yes. Hello, yes or no? Yes. Again, how many of you are starting to feel like this might be a lot of work, yes? Who's thinking it might be a lot of work? Who's feeling that way? Okay, great. They're the ones, and others of you, who's feeling like it's not going to be as much work? There's going to be some of you who have got pretty fit businesses. And if you've got a pretty fit business, you've got a little bit of work ahead of you. Others of you, your business is unfit, it's got a lot more work ahead of you. But is it good work to do to work on your business and build a business that works rather than doing the same work every day for the next 20 years? See, you've got to change the work you're doing if you want to change the results you're getting. Do we need systems in place at some point in our business? Yes or no? Yes. Simpler system. Checklist. Even simpler. Photographs. In my restaurant, do you think we have photographs of what it should look like when it's cleaned up? Yes or no? Yes. Yeah. Where are they? On the wall. This is what this should look like. If it doesn't look like this, it's not proper. Too many businesses, they... If I can put it really bluntly, they have this ego thing of, I should know what to do rather than having a checklist to remind you of what to do.
It's easy to forget little simple things. That's why we do scripting in sales. It's why we do all of these basic fundamentals where we add systems in place in a business. So from there, I, I, it says nine stages of systemization in a company. Now, I won't go in these in detail. Why? Because they're in the book and you're all going to buy the book later, so that's okay. <laughs> you all laugh at me as if I'm not even going to buy the book. You're all going to go to the back of the room and buy the book afterwards, yes or no? Yes, yes you are. How many are you going to buy all of them? Okay, why are you going to buy all of them? Because you know you need that information. Okay, now even simpler than that, team, is that when we follow through, and, and I want, the reason I put up all nine steps here is not to go through all nine steps with you here tonight. We don't have time for that. But for you to understand that what we do at Action Coach is step by step. It's thought through because we've done this with tens of thousands of companies. What you're doing is following a system to grow your business. Okay? It's a checklist to grow your business. Can you see how I'm teaching you systems by showing you that we have systems for you to do what you need to do? See, and that's the ultimate point behind it, that many business owners feel like there's this hard thing to grow their business. But if you feel it's tough, and then you see that there's a checklist to follow, it makes it a lot simpler for you, okay? So from there, we go up to the next level, which is team. And team is where we get to that final stage of the definition, that works what? Without you. See, if you have to be there, it's not yet a business. Ultimately, we'll want a business that is finished, a business that works so you don't have to. And that's what we have to plan. It's what we have to create. So let's just take a quick look at team building. When we, stick, when we understand team building, we understand that there's multiple parts to a business. There's you, the owner, there's your team, there's your customers, and there's the business. Most business owners are running around trying to take care of all three. They're running around trying to help the team. They're running around trying to help the customers. They're running around trying to take care of the business. Ultimately, the way we teach you to build a great team, and there's six keys to a winning team. Again, they're in the book. The coach will work with you on them. Ultimately, when you look at the six keys to a winning team, it's about you building a great team. So you build the team. They take care of the customers. The, how you take care of them is a direct reflection of how they take care of the customers. So the more training you give them, the more systems you give them, the more, the more things you do to help them become better team members, then the better they take care of the customers. So as they take care of the customers, what do the customers then take care of? Everyone? Business. The business. And then the business takes care of you. So you build the people, and this is ultimately the point behind team. You can't build your own business. You have to build the people who build the business. And yeah, much of what I teach is you know, really exciting and all that sort of stuff, but it takes work. The business of business is dealing with humans, is dealing with people. You build people, they build the business. You build relationships, they bring marketing to you. You build relationships with customers, they keep coming back. It's the business of humans. So the better you get at the business of humans, the better you get at business. Now ultimately, if we go to that stage there, now we can go into duplication. Now we can go into building a business that really where the synergy kicks in, where we can multiply it, open multiple offices, open in multiple countries, open in multiple areas, franchise it, license it, go into capital raising and opening. You know, there's so many different things you can do once you have a business model that works. If, I don't know if any of you have seen, recently there was a great movie called The Founder about Ray Kroc, where he found a model of business that the McDonald brothers had built, and he just replicated it all across the world. So your first job is build a great model. Your second job is then replicate it in as many places as you want, if you choose that. So choose where you want to go with your business. I, I, I guess, and, and of course you all know Richard Branson, and he's come out with some amazing quotes. And uh, I'm, I'm very proud to say that he actually did quote me one time, which uh, on his Twitter page, uh, which was quite interesting to see where he said, uh, my quote was, uh, entrepreneurs are the crazy people that work 80 hours a week for themselves so they don't have to work 40 hours a week for someone else. You know, how many of you fit that mold, by the way? You know, it's, I remember as a young man, I, I was not a good employee. I was, I'm very good at working for myself. I was not a good employee. I was allowed to move on from jobs very regularly. Um, yes, I got fired a lot. But when Branson sort of sits there and says, hang on, if you learn it, you can use it anywhere. And I want you to think of coaching as being like, uh, your apprenticeship with one business, where you learn business with one business, and then you can apply it to as many businesses as you like. 
So the coach that brought you here, do you need to get back with them and meet with them and actually go through and look at the opportunity for growth in your business, yes or no? Yes. Hello, yes or no? Yes. Yeah, you need to sit with them for an hour or two and actually examine your business. Where are the strengths? Where are the weaknesses? What can you achieve with your business? Because the funniest thing about it is that because you're in your business, you don't even see how great your business can be. Sometimes we get so frustrated with our own business, we don't even see where the business can be. Sometimes it's such a pain in the butt that we're so focused on just paying wages. And I always say you've never really owned a business until you've struggled to pay wages. Because on that day, and this is where I want you to understand, I've been through... Uh, I know, it's easy for me to say it now, you know, multi-millionaire companies all over the world. Action Coach now runs uh, over a thousand offices in 75 countries around the world. We coach in, you know, pretty much everywhere, you name it, we got coaches doing it type thing. And it's easy for me to say from where I am that, hey, you've just got to go out there and learn this stuff and invest in the learning. Well, when I was 16 years of age, I sat where you sit today. I sat in the seminar with a gentleman by the name of Jim Rohn, E. James Rohn. And Mr. Rohn taught me many things, but here's one that I want to uh, put up to you, or two, sorry, quotes that he gave me that I think are probably two things that changed the course of my life. I'll get you all to read it out for me. Never wish, your life were easier. Never wish your life were easier, wish that you were better. See, never wish business was easier, wish that you were better at business. Never wish sales were easier, wish that you were better at sales. If you've got a problem with not enough cash flow, then you need to learn more sales or more marketing skills. It's not complex. See, at age 16, I don't know about you, but I was one of those kids with the attitude of, well, you know, it should be easier. But Mr. Rohn flipped my thinking. Mr. Rohn made me think differently. He then backed it up with the second statement. Everyone call it out for me. What is it? Work harder on yourself than you do on your job. I ran down to him afterwards with my notes and asked him to sign my notes. I said, Mr. Rohn, would you mind signing my notes? I'm 16, I'd really, you know, and Mr. Rohn, what's the one piece of advice you can give me that'll guarantee me I'll be successful? He said, son, it's really simple. Read a book a week for the rest of your life. Not a month, not every two weeks. A book a week for the rest of your life. I was 16 then, I'm 46 today. More than 2,000 books so far I've gone through. And you start to think about it. See, if you outlearn me, you can outearn me. The whole point behind a team is you've got to do the learning. No one can do your learning for you. Schwarzenegger put it best many years ago when he said, no one, will, no one can do your push-ups for you. And in business, your push-ups is the learning. See, the challenge is the learning work, it's a bit harder than the doing work because the learning work means change, means adapting, means moving forward. But if it wasn't for Mr. Jim Rohn, I probably wouldn't have got on this path, which means Action Coach wouldn't be here, which means many businesses wouldn't be where they are today. And you know, I'm very privileged that every year we get to help businesses create jobs all over the world and create better economies all over the world. But today it's your turn. Today it's your turn to start growing your business because here's the most interesting fact. And I'm going to make sure every one of you, the first hour with your coach is free of charge. I'm going to make sure the first hour is free of charge with your coach because of, well, three reasons. Number one, the more the more. What would happen in this room? Let's imagine, because just in this, in this economy here, if every single one of you added five jobs in the next year in your business, what would happen to the economy? The local economy here, what would happen? Would it boom, yes or no? Yes. Yeah, because every one of you adds five new employees, which means every one of you adds five new customers for every other one of you. And that's the challenge with business. People think there's a scarcity of it. No, as business grows, there's more money for everyone because there's more employees with money. No, not complex. Secondly, I want to make sure that your first hour with the coach is free is because, and we've done this for 24 years, if we can help you grow your business for free, if we can give you ideas for free that make you want to grow, then guess what will happen when you become a customer? Even this seminar here today, doing it with you free of charge, why do I do that? Why do I travel the world and do it at my own expense to teach people business? Real simple. I've been doing it for 24 years and I'll continue to do it for 24 more. Very simple. If I help you grow your business, then everybody wins. But if I help you grow your business now in a free event, there's a pretty good chance you'll become a customer at some point. Yes or no? Yes. Hello, yes or no? Yes. In fact, you might not. You might just refer me to one of your friends who becomes a customer. 
And ultimately, the other reason is, I want many of you to learn what coaching is all about, because some of you in this room might want to become a coach one day. And one thing at Action Coach we're always looking for is more great coaches. If you'd love to do what I do, become a great business coach, we'd love to, sit, we'd love to meet with you as well after the event. Okay. Final lesson. If you don't know where you want to be in five years, you're already there. If you don't know where you want to be in five years, you're already there. You'll just be a little bit grayer, a little bit older, a little bit plumper. If you don't make change now, when are you going to do it? If you don't make a decision now to make change, when are you going to? So I had four, four goals and one rule. My first rule, we had to have a bit of fun. Did we have a little bit of fun here tonight, yes or no? Yes. Okay, good, a little bit of fun. Not always fun, but you know, some parts are going to be fun, some not. My second goal, was, my first goal, sorry, my rule was fun. My goal was what? The way I had to be your educator. Did you get some good notes and get some good ideas? Yes or no? Yes. Okay, my third was to be, my second goal was to be your business coach. Have I been your coach so far? I don't know. How many of you feel a little beat up? Say yeah. yeah. <laughs> How many feel a lot beat up? Yes, good. More room for improvement. Excellent. Keep learning from that one. Um, third was to make sure that you got some ideas you can improve on tomorrow. Have you got ideas you can take action on tomorrow? Yes or no? And my fourth was to help you decide what level of coaching you need. Do you need to start at least with the books, yes or no? Yes. And I'm not sure which one or whether it's all of them, but start there. Maybe you need to, but at least, at the very least, get back with the coach that invited you here and make sure you get to spend some time with them, invest in learning about your business so you can grow your business. Thanks, everyone, for being a great audience. I really appreciate it. Take care and keep growing your business. Bye for now. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.